Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa. Naples back after a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, part of it, you know, weather related. Some of it, you know, I had a cold. Uh, don't like to put germs all over people's cars. So, uh, but anyway, I'm back in healthy and proper and uh, everything's flowing nicely. It's a nice, cool, crisp Florida morning. We've got clouds. Uh, you know, it's my kind of day, and I've got my kind of car. Uh, this is a 2001 Jaguar XJ8 Vanden Pla. Uh, it's finished in Oxford white outside. It's got ivory Connolly hides inside, and uh, it is a big, sleek, beautiful, leaping cat. Uh, you know, Jaguar has an incredible history. I went into it in some other Jag videos, so I'll just do a little overview. Uh, it started as the Swallow Sidecar Company uh, with two motorcycle guys back in 1922. Uh, one of them being uh, William Lyons, who, you know, later to be knighted and become Sir William Lyons. And, uh, you know, they made sidecars for a while. They got into building, uh, you know, bodies. So the way that happened back then, you know, people, they, they were coach builders that built bodies for companies companies that made uh, chassis for cars and uh, that's the way it worked with them. So they were putting bodies on some of these cars. They uh, decided to split up and, you know, swallow sidecars went its own way and uh, William Lyons became the SS uh, car company, SS something, can't remember, but he had to change that after a while because of the German connotations. He thought that might have a little bit of an evil tinge to it uh, and uh, took the name Jaguar, which actually had to be granted to him from Armstrong Sidney, who owned uh, the name Jaguar for their airplane motors. So uh, anyway, Jaguar was born pre-war. Uh, you know, of course, they had a little hiccup with the whole World War II thing, but then came back strong and uh, developed uh, some really cool cars over the years. What was interesting about those cars is they were all based on this Jaguar 6 and 12 cylinder motor. Uh, it was the only two motors Jaguar had for years. I mean, many years. Some of that was because they couldn't afford to develop more. Uh, others was, it was just really a great motor. But uh, anyway, this was the first, believe it or not, Jaguar V8 that came in this, uh, this is the X308 platform, and depending on how you look at it, it's either the sixth uh, XJ platform or, uh, you know, the second, the third incarnation of the second. Uh, yeah, I'll get into it all in a minute. Uh, but the XJ, anyway, was a sedan that came out in the late 60s. It was the last car that was uh, sort of had the real influence of William Lyons. He was sort of in decline at that point. He's a pretty old guy. And uh, that went through three series, series one, series two, series three. And then the XJ40 came out. Uh, in the uh, late 1980s, which was, you know, a bit of a departure, uh, not quite as pretty, honestly, that XJ40. And this is the third series of the XJ40 platform, and uh, they did make it a hell of a lot prettier by the time this one rolled along. Uh, and of course, uh, this uses the Vanden Pla name. God, this is just going to go on and on and on. Sorry, guys. Uh, Vanden Pla was a Belgian coach builder in the late 19th century. They started building axles, and then and they um, uh, went on to build uh, coaches for some pretty famous cars. And uh, Jaguar, I mean, my God, what a convoluted history. Uh, Jaguar owned a company named Daimler, not to be confused with Daimler-Benz. Uh, Daimler became the high-end Jaguar stuff, like the Daimler Princess that was used, you know, extensively for sheiks and royalty and queens and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, Jaguar decided that that name was not uh, usable in North America. It just took too much to market, uh, you know, the name Daimler and the name Jaguar. So they just made it the Vanden Pla. They owned that name through some, you know, long ago merger of companies. And uh, the big luxurious limousine type Jaguars just got the Vanden Pla badging. And, uh, of course, a longer wheelbase. So, anyway, all of that aside, let's get into this for a minute. Now, <clears throat> the first XJ40 had these big, ugly square headlights that really nobody liked, these strange smoked 
uh, taillights. Again, a real departure for Jag. And uh, in the second series, which looked very much like this one, there's very few cosmetic differences between series two and three in this, uh, but they did go back to the round headlights with the sculpted hood, uh, you know, beautiful big wide grill, lovely chrome accents, very attractive wheels, uh, you know, low roof line. These cars are, it has the same wheelbase as a similar year town car, believe it or not, but is uh, a foot shorter uh, otherwise and much, much lower. So, uh, you know, pace and uh, space and grace or, you know, something like that. Anyway, that's their logo. Uh, you can see the lovely curves on the car. Uh, the thing that I've always loved about Jaguars is that they're different from the cars they compete with. They're not Teutonic. You know, you get in a big BMW or a big Mercedes, uh, you know, it's solid, it's stodgy, it's glued to the pavement, it's, you know, here I am, here I am. And the Jaguar, is, it's much more elegant, uh, much uh, lighter. You know, it's not necessarily any more nimble or anything, but it just has a look that's more... Uh, I don't know, warm and welcoming. Uh, you know, the Oxford white in this car is lovely. It's a nice uh, yeah, nice combination for it. Uh, and this one in particular, 30,000 mile, uh, trade in a Benita Mercedes. I was so happy to get this thing. Uh, but listen, if you're looking at this car, throw the book out the window, forget it. I had to pay a ton for this thing. Uh, and uh, I can tell you book values are just not gonna work. So don't even call and tell me what KBB says. It really doesn't matter. But uh, I digress. Uh, you know, look at the chrome around the uh, the windows, the lovely chrome on the bumpers, the twice pipes in the back, the beautiful wheels. Look at the length of the rear door on this uh, long wheelbase model. Look at that window. Look at the length of that thing. I mean, it is absolutely insane. And yet, with the styling, they do manage to make it not look awkward. So, um, you know, kudos to their engineering department on that. Funny enough, William Lines, he never really had a design department when he was doing the cars. He's not the guy who came up with the most famous cars, the E-Type and uh, D-Type. That was uh, Malcolm Sayer. But uh, the cars that William Lyons designed, he just kind of did it himself, uh, you know, with no real proper training in, like, aerodynamics or wind tunneling. He just sort of carved them out and had an engineering team put his designs together. And, uh, you know, this car is basically an adaptation of his design for the original XJ. So a pretty talented cat and uh, definitely probably deserved to be knighted. Anyway, let's get into this thing. Famous uh, gas store up there in the trunk or on top of the car. All right, so good useful trunk. It's not what I would call enormous. It's a little bit shallow, but it's adequate. You'll be able to get golf clubs in there and, uh, you know, cartons of doilies and wine glasses and boxes of pate and wheels of cheese and, you know, whatever else Jaguar people need. Uh, you have a little uh, six disc changer there on the side. You pull up this panel, you get a, a true full-size spare tire. Uh, you got some electronics and stuff under that panel. Uh, it's, you know, it's properly finished in this sort of stuff that if you ever carry mulch in the car, you're never going to get it out. Uh, it's like Velcro, but uh, anyway, thank God nobody ever has, and it's all very nice in there. There you see the Vanden Pla badging on this car, kind of cool. Another thing I like is they uh, retained these sort of power antennas, the chrome things, for years and years and years, and uh, that's, uh, you know, Again, a nice, elegant touch. Uh, to get in the trunk, you push that little angry cat looking at you, which we'll get into that cat logo in a minute. Not necessarily a big fan of that. Okay, so a reverse opening hood I like. Uh, here on the front, you can see the Leaper. Very, very cool stuff. That's the, uh, you know, angry Jaguar at the front of the thing moving, you know, the way forward. Uh, one thing that's interesting about these is they had to make them break away at a certain point because they were disemboweling pedestrians. And uh, you just couldn't have that. It got blood all over the front of your car. It, it cost a fortune to detail out. Uh, and it was just unpleasant. So uh, they started making the breakaway hood ornaments. Anyway, under here, there it is. Four liters of all aluminum Jaguar V8. Uh, huge influence from Ford. Uh, you know, this car was a real diversion from Jaguar in the sense that 
um, it, it lost a lot of what Jaguar was known for, which was, you know, really shitty electronics, uh, motors that quit running, rusty body panels, and really bad quality control. So uh, that mystique sort of got abandoned when Ford took them over in the, uh, in the 90s and, uh, you know, added a lot of Bosch electronics and Ford stuff and, you know, made these cars a hell of a lot more reliable. So anyway, first V8 engine, 32 valves, dual overhead cams, look at those cool looking tuned intake runners, all very lovely under the hood, not very complicated, nice panels covering everything, not a bunch of, man, you open the hood of a Series 3 mid-80s Jaguar and it's a nightmare to look at. You just want to close it immediately and run away at top speed. Uh, not the case by the time this uh, XJ rolled around, so uh, everything lovely under there, proper as it should be. You know, you see things like these bushings, the way they're perfectly intact. Uh, on many cars, you see those are all disintegrated. Uh, you know, this thing had fantastic maintenance and uh, is really in tip-top condition. <clears throat> nope. It's no good. There we go. Uh, there you see a single wiper blade. Uh, you know, it could be better, actually. I think dual blades would have been uh, a better job of clearing the windshield. But it's fine, and it's nice, and it's subdued and elegant. Uh, the chrome touch is lovely. You get these sort of subtle chrome things down the doors. You get a little leaping cat badge. That's the traditional Jaguar badge that I like. That's the one that I want on the steering wheel, not this big, scary, cartoonish cat looking at me. We'll get into that. Lovely chrome mirrors, little chrome door handles there, V8 logo on the chrome center pillars, the lovely chrome around the windows. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, actually, I'm going to go to the other side for this. This is one of the cool things about the Vandenplaat. Look at that big uh, Alpine subwoofer back there. Uh, it is an upgraded package, of course, meant to have limousine duty. So look at the footroom that you get. Absolutely epic. A little bit of a low, uh, you know, headliner type thing. So not the headliner, but the roof line is a little bit low. So you have to duck to get in, but you do feel nicely ensconced and comfortable once you are. But the thing isn't really made for someone who's 6'7", the way a Mercedes is. Uh, you can see the beautiful inlaid walnut, absolutely gorgeous stitched leather. Very elegant uh, Alpine speaker with the chrome trim, the contrasting carpet, darker with the lighter, and back to the darker, the little chrome around the door locks, the chrome door handles with the pinstripe in the walnut, uh, little hidden ashtrays, uh, Mustang style switches. I mean, those are directly out of a 92 Mustang, but, you know, and you can say that's crappy, but the ergonomics in the old Jaguars was terrible, and it never worked. I mean, this thing, not only is it cheap to replace, if it ever goes bad, it probably won't go bad. Uh, you get this nice little chrome scuff plate. Uh, again, the most beautiful leather in the world goes in Jaguars. Look at the piping, uh, the bunch stuff in the middle. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, lovely little inlaid tray here. Very, very nice. Your rear vents. These rear seats are heated. Uh, let's see if I can pull this out. It's hard to do one-handed. There we go. Uh, you get these cool little writing tables or place to put your uh, crystal glasses or, you know, whatever you want to put up there. All very nice stuff. Little trays. That's a signature of the Vanden Pla or Vanden Pla. I know people are going to correct me. You call it what you want. Uh, you get these uh, controls for the seat. This is the limousine thing. So you're sitting back here and you want more uh, leg room. You can just move this whole seat forward and get it out of your way. I guess that's how Princess Diana fit her legs in these things. And I'm telling you, this car is just for people who want luxury with a difference. Uh, again, it's so easy to go the German route, but it's just not welcoming the way that... This is like an old British gentleman's club looking inside this thing. And frankly, Jaguar doesn't really have it anymore. Uh, you know, they really modernized in such a way that they are just like everybody else, truly. You know, they may add a bit more wood or throw back to some other stuff, but it's not like this car was. It's a very, very different setup. Uh, again, the beautiful inlaid walnut, the Ford switches, you got your memory seats, little pocket there to fit your uh, Walther PPK, uh, and everything uh, just lovely. The seat controls down here, more of the piping. Uh, this uh, Vandenpla, Vandenpla gives you these beautiful sheepskin floor mats, which are a little bit ridiculous and also awesome. So uh, just cool stuff.
All right, let's hop in. We'll fire it up. Okay, that big eight fires to life in an absolute quiet, soft, subtle way that you really don't hear. And that's one of the themes in this car is it is quiet. Okay, now here you see this instrument cluster. That was another departure for Jaguar. Uh, all the XJ40s had this weird square hump in the middle and strange gauges. Uh, they took the gauges out of the XK that had come out a year earlier than these cars and uh, put them in this one with three nice gauges properly laid out, nicely illuminated. Uh, you know, the way it all goes together is just lovely. Uh, this walnut steering wheel is gorgeous to grip. Feels beautiful, nice leather beautiful wood. Uh, there's this, again, this angry cat staring at you. It looks like some sort of stupid superhero. Uh, I want that leaping thing back. I, I don't want this thing with the teeth and the tongue and, uh, God, it's a bit much. Uh, I much would have preferred a cat there. Uh, anyway, you got vents, a nice subdued clock, you know, a lot of, uh, I feel like the Germans sometimes make up for their uh, Teutonic subtlety by having these big gaudy analog clocks. Jaguar resisted that temptation and just has a very nice proper little clock uh, right where it should be. Uh, beautiful leather stitching on the center console. Uh, this used to be called the ski slope in earlier Jaguar, still retained some of that shape. Uh, you've got very nice easy to look at buttons here, the heated seats, your traction control on and off if you want to go do burnouts. Uh, very nice easy climate control. Uh, does not have dual side, which is interesting. That was in most cars when this thing came out, but not this one. Uh, this, uh, you know, very standard, lovely in-dash AM, FM, you know, CD changer in the trunk, plenty of speakers, subwoofer, premium sound thing. Uh, you got a glove box over there. I'm not going to reach for it, but it's got a set of books. Uh, here you see the Vanden Plas, uh signature on the wood, all very nice. Uh, Self-dimming mirror up here, your more wood in the top, you got a place to stash your sunglasses, all very nice. Uh, Jaguar's uh, traditional J-shifter. Uh, this stuff's still working, like this ashtray, miracle. Uh, these always break, the cup holders, so uh, again, the fact that these work as perfectly as they do is a testament to just how gently this car has been used. Lovely leather on the e-brake everywhere, lovely leather on the shifter hump here. Uh, I, I can't remember what this is. I think this is that uh, speed control warning. I don't know if that's the cruise control or not. No, cruise control is over here. So this is that speed control <laughs> warning that I guess it works in uh, English where you have all those, uh, you know, government cameras that can give you tickets. It'll start beeping if you get over a certain number uh, of speed, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, sports setting, I believe, on uh, this thing, and that changes the suspension a little bit to um, uh, stiffen it up if you're going to do some heavy cornering or, you know, probably not something you're going to be doing. So let's just leave that off and go for a spin beautiful steering on this car and very sporty steering. Uh, you know, for instance, when you're going around a corner, a tight corner, uh, you know, with some sort of sporty driving, the wheel doesn't spin its way back and self-correct. Uh, you have to turn it back just like you would in a race car, which is quite neat. You know, I have to say that a Jaguar is a driver's car and has historically been a driver's car. You can't say that about Lexus, you know? It really sort of hugs the middle ground between the German cars with their, you know, incredible tuned suspensions and their Autobahn burning driving, and then these ultra soft Lexuses, which are just, you know, designed to transport you nicely and comfortably without any real sportiness to them. Uh, this is right in the middle. Uh, you get the lovely, delicate, feel of a Lexus. You know, it's bone quiet in here. You can't hear a thing. It's whisper quiet. Uh, and yet you do feel connected to the road. You feel lovely steering. You feel a nice brake response. Uh, it is a dream. You know, you want to put on your leather driving gloves and your cravat and your scarf and your hat and, you know, tool out into the English countryside and, you know, take corners sportily before retiring to the castle and having pate with the chambermaid. All right. So 290 horsepower out of this thing. Uh, 
you know, I'm not going to hammer it. There's just no reason to. Uh, it kind of is what it is. It's got enough torque to, you know, move you down the road nicely. Uh, but at the same time, it's not a race car. It's not going to throw you back in your seat. Uh, if you want that, get the supercharged version. I mean, this thing is really about just a lovely drive. I can't believe how quiet it is. No vibration. Uh, you know, a lot of the engineering in this car went into uh, isolating the cabin and the driver from any noise or vibration. The subframe, the uh, control arms and A-arms up front, the suspension in the back. Uh, the whole thing is built around keeping you uh, safe from, you know, harshness and vibration and noise. And man, it works. It really works. Oh, God, all the red lights. Always the red lights. <sighs> anyway, so here we are. You know, nice, beautiful look at hood in front of you. Lovely feel from the steering. Uh, I just, again, feel like a lovely British gentleman on my way to the club. And uh, that's the difference between Jaguar and uh, a lot of cars that it competes with. And, uh, again, what a special piece this is. Uh, 2001, 33,000 miles. Incredible maintenance, incredible cosmetic maintenance, garage kept since new. Uh, this thing is an absolute champion. Beautiful, beautiful car. Absolutely collectible looking. I mean, I, I don't know if it'll be collectible, but uh, you sure couldn't be hurt having one like this in your garage. You feel that nice torque from the aid when you need it. <laughs> and you barely hear it. Uh, anyway, there it is. So, 01 Jaguar Vanden Pla, Oxford White over Ivory. Uh, gorgeous car in every way. If you have an interest, give us a call, 239-298-8000, on the web at aenaples.com. Thank you so much for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.